Three pro-lifers and three pro-choicers get together, answer questions about their position to see if they can find common ground. Today, I respond. Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac and today I'm going to be talking about and responding to a recent video done by Jubilee. Um, well, I guess it's not that recent. <laughs> it's actually two years old. Anyway, I found this video and I thought it was really interesting. A conversation between pro-lifers and pro-choicers. They sit down to find middle ground and I think this concept is really interesting. Uh, also, the question of should there be middle ground on this issue is something that might come to mind. So we'll talk about it. Watch the video and dig into some of the stuff. If you're new to this channel, my name is Isaac and this is Daily Disciple Ministry where I help you follow Jesus daily. I realize a lot of people that aren't Christians might watch this video and if so, that's okay. Welcome here and I'm excited to be able to share this with you. Let's dig into the video. I spent way too much time on that. Sometimes I question my beliefs around Oh, right. Oh. Start talking. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. because you hear the other person's perspective and you're like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I think I question mine often because I could imagine that if I wasn't living my life based on my Christianity, um, I would want women to have that choice as well. Okay, interesting question. Um, the girl said that, the Christian girl, she said, yeah, if I didn't have my Christian worldview, I can see how I would believe differently. I believe, I, I could understand how I could see abortion as being okay or as a woman's right or, or whatever. And I think that's an important statement and clarification to make. If you're a Christian, then where do you get your sense of morality? Where do you find this objective morality by which you, you base your life? What is right? What is wrong? It is ultimately based on God. How do we learn about God? Well, we learn about God through what you know, what we learn about is general revelation. So general revelation is creation. We can know that God is orderly by the order in creation, that God is creative by the creativity. And we know more about God through specific revelation, the Bible. So we're learning about God, what is right, what is wrong, what is our sense of morality, we learn it through our conscience, which he has given to us, but it ultimately comes from God. Without recognizing that objective morality in the Bible and based on God's character, we're left in this sense of, of finding morality in a subjective way, based on our own perspectives, opinions, beliefs, experiences. And this is what a lot of people within the pro-choice movement, most of them, all of them, I would say, are, are left with. They're left with this sense that, well, in my my opinion based on my experiences it's okay because that's what I believe and this is why I get confused when pro-lifers talk about you know pro-life being disconnected from Christianity like you can you know oh it's not about religion it's not about you know God or anything like that no it is actually all based on the foundation of the scriptures that's what it's based on and when we why is abortion wrong it's abortion abortion is wrong because it's the taking of a life God said in your mother's womb I, I was forming you and you are created in my image thou shall not murder all these things play together and form this morality that's based on God's character but I believe fundamentally that the woman should have that right to make the decision and it's I've never been anybody who's pro-abortion oftentimes they don't have good choices and they're picking the lesser of the bad choices yeah I just feel like uh my, I'm very certain of my views because uh, I want to respect that everyone has that option. Okay, interesting. The pro-choice guy, he says that, you know, I, there are few people that are actually kind of like pro-abortion. It's just kind of the best of two evils. This is a common inconsistency within kind of the argumentation of pro-choice people. They'll say abortion, you know, it's not ideal, but sometimes it has to happen. Sometimes, it, you know, it's the best option available. But at the same time, they'll argue that it's just a blob of cells, a clump of tissue. If it is a life, then it should be protected. And if it isn't a life, then why is it such a, why are people kind of waffling in terms of getting an abortion? If it's not a life, then what's the big deal? But the thing is, is they know it is a life. That's why he's saying, oh, well, nobody he's really pro-abortion it's two you know bad scenarios here and because they know it is a life but 
they're willing to sacrifice that life for the convenience of the mother or whatever that may be for. I want to be careful here because often what's missing in this conversation is compassion, compassion for the other people on the other side of the argument because in no way should these conversations or debates be filled with hate. I'm passionate about this issue because I do believe it's a life in the womb that deserves to be protected because it was created in the image of God. The other lady was, was saying, you know, I just want to give people the choice. I want women to have the choice to do it. It really gets back to our morality, where our foundation is, right? Because if we do believe that's a life, and if we do believe in the scripture when it says, thou shall not murder, Right? It's not our choice to take those things into our hands to do what God has said don't do. Part of the problem of arguing pragmatically in term, instead of uh, arguing from the Bible is that when we argue pragmatically, often people will say, well, look, everyone believes it's wrong to, to kill somebody so or murder somebody. So we just need to kind of give them enough evidence to realize that, hey, it is a person in the womb. Well, the thing is, is that scientists have over across the board, look it up, concluded that yes, it is a life within the womb, right? They've concluded that. That's closed issue, right? You, you'd you have to go far to find people that will argue that. But now the thing is, now what they're moving to is the fact that, okay, it may be a life in the womb, but the woman still has the right to kill it because it's her body or whatever, right? So you see how the goalposts have moved. When it's a subjective morality or our understanding of what is right and wrong, it'll move based on convenience. So because they have no foundation for which they, they place right and wrong, when they say, oh, well, now we need to kill this person because it inconveniences us or, or we don't want it or whatever it may be, they can do that because it's not based on anything. We need to get back at the heart of this issue, which is the matter of the heart. It's our heart understanding of what is right, what is wrong, who God is, what he has commanded us to do, what our purpose here is on earth. All these things are connected. And you may think, Isaac, you're insane. What are you talking about? All these things aren't connected. You're just crazy. No, they're all connected because it all impacts our worldview. And this, at the heart of it, is a worldview issue. The only difference we have is when that uh, fetus becomes a human wife. If that's a human being, then my tonsils are human beings. I think there are that's answers That's a scary that. gray area. And in the Bible, you did say, you know, I don't know what part of Christianity, but Jesus says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, not a sparrow falls from the sky without my knowing. I feel like I really respect you and your faith. Um, I, res I respect that that's your feeling and that, you know, that, that you all feel that way. But I also feel like um, one can feel that way regardless of the Bible, regardless of Christianity. You know, it's one of those things that happens and has happened actually for decades, you know, for a while. And people make that decision, and it is their decision. They make that decision for whatever reasons, you know. I mean, again, you've, you've helped people who have taken a pill first then changed their mind, and I think that's great. But if you have one and you feel regretful, then deal with it. If you have one you don't really feel regretful or you feel like it really truly was the best decision for you, then that's what happens. And I just think we all know people like that or I, don't, I just don't feel like we have any right to, to force a particular way. And, 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 you know, I think it's great to, to try to just be open. I want to encourage some of you Christian guys and girls that are watching this video right now. Um, we can be in conversations with people similar to this lady that, you know, when we'll quote scripture or go back to our foundation, which is in the Bible, she'll kind of disregard it as like, oh, well, you know what, you believe that and other people believe that kind of thing and other people believe that, kind of undermining the power of the scriptures, really. And I think it's really important for us not to lose confidence or try to be like, oh yeah, she's right, or I should go somewhere else. Maybe I try to go to some evidential, like this is why abortion's bad. Maybe uh, more women feel bad after they do it. So this is why you shouldn't have an abortion. Um, maybe those things can be interesting to look at, but at the heart of it, the reason that we're opposed to abortion and the reason that it's not just, well, it's, you know, some people do it for this reason, some people do it for this reason, it's their choice. The reason that it's not that way is because God has declared it. And too often, my friends, too often, and I'm the same way, we'll submit to other people's authorities and we'll leave our own, we'll leave God's authority 
will we'll be like, yeah, you're, you're right, that is kind of, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, you don't believe that, so that doesn't matter. Can't we stick to what God has said? Can't we be bold about what he has called us to? Because we're going to need people, especially in this conversation, that not only approach this with compassion, but approach it with truth and their bearings stuck into the foundation, not hey, this is what the newest evidence say, hey, not the, you know, that can be helpful and interesting, but the heart of it, our foundation is in the scriptures where we know and learn about God. We have a relationship with him. And that's how we go out and approach any of these issues. Children, what's your view about abortion? To me, it, yeah, in my experience at Planned Parenthood, almost everybody got kids. And it, the, the slogan, if you will, of, of Planned Parenthood was, no child, an unwanted child. Not, and we wanted our children, and that's why we chose to have them. What about all the people that would gladly take care of that child that cannot have a pregnancy to Pretty save their option. life? Well, because the woman has to go, has to go through Nine that. months for a whole life that a child could have? It, it, yeah. um, I think one of the things that I immediately reacted to is that Okay, nine months, whatever, but there are so many children, not just in America, but the world over, that don't have loving parents, that are not in a loving situation, that are not cared for, fed, clothed, loved. And I, and I think that is the most important thing, to care about our children because they are our future. So I the mean, child in the womb has no value whatsoever? No, I don't think so at all. I'm not saying that. I never said okay, that. Okay, I'm just asking. I'm just yeah. saying that to me that's unclear whether it's you know this or that or this or that. And despite the fact that you say there are people out there that want to adopt this child or want to take care of this child, there are still so many that are not. This struck me. Um, she approaches this, the, the pro-abortion lady, uh, she approaches this with kind of a, an aura of compassion. And I, I, I don't want to question the fact that, that maybe in her heart she feels like this is compassionate. Um, but when we truly think about it, and, and if we're getting to you know our understanding of what it is in the womb, this is a common argument that people say. They'll say, okay, you know what, if you have that child, maybe they won't have good parents, it'll be another child in an orphanage, they won't be loved, they won't be taken care of. So why, why would you want to put them through this? Almost painting you as like the bad person now, as them the compassionate person because they just, they don't want to even bring this child in the world. And now you're making them live this hard life and difficult life. You're somehow the evil person here. It's a really twisted argument because you think about it, if we believe, which it is, the ch a child in the womb it is a child, right? we're saying, well, it's just better to put them out of their misery early enough. So we'll just kill them now. So then they don't have to have a hard life. To me, that is, that's not compassionate at all. That's like the idea that you, you know, somebody gets sick or somebody's having a hard life and, and you just are like, you know what, they're having a hard time. Let's just put them out of it. That's the compassionate thing to do. No, it's not. Pro-choice people seem like, oh, it's all about choice, all about choice, all about choice. And yet the one person who doesn't have choice is the baby in the womb. Think about that. Okay, so I could honestly go on for hours on this topic, but I hope you got something out of this video. Our foundation, our understanding of how to approach abortion should come from the Bible, not just from random arguments. They may be helpful, may be interesting, um, but ultimately our foundation is in Jesus, in Christ, what the Bible says. If you're new to this channel, if you're new to this channel, uh, subscribe down below because I'm making new videos like this all the time. If you like this video format style, leave a comment down below. Let me know what video you want me to respond to next. If you find an interesting one, feel free to send it to me on Instagram or whatever. Uh, follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Check out the, my website, dailydisciple.ca. And uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. And um, I'll see you next time. See ya.